Hello and welcome to this new tutorial. This time it's a little bit different because I thought why not do a test with the microphones I own and to really put it through the ringer. So today I will test every microphone that I own. I also will point out links to the microphones. Uh, I am not sponsored by any company um, that I present today. So this test will basically be like so. I will record each and every microphone I own in 48 kilohertz and 24 bit. Basically uh, that's how everyone records their sound. Uh, the only difference is I will use my F6 recorder and you might not have the F6, you might have the, I don't know, H4N or H5 or something like that. That's totally fine and this is by no means a scientific test I will do. But it's just for me to see uh, which microphones to use in which environment um, because I will have this room right here, which is fairly treated uh, on the walls. There are some foam boards and um, I used to have uh, some big pieces of cloth uh, to soak up the audio that's reflecting from the, uh, the ceiling and the walls, but I will not use that today. Basically, it's a pretty raw test and I want to compare this environment right here with the worst room I've ever been to. And this is actually our conference room right there. So this room is basically, it's just a big room with a lot of surfaces and a lot of possibilities for the audio to really, you know, jump around and going back into the microphone. So I think that's where we can really see a difference on the pickup pattern that the microphone has. And I think that um, the old saying or the, the big uh, guys in the industry uh, who say, put your microphone as close to your subject as humanly possible to really um, emphasize that sound and to really cancel out everything else in the room. I think we will see if that holds true. So let's jump right into the next room. All right. so. This is the untreated room and there's a lot of space and a lot of different, uh, well, a lot of walls and a lot of things where sound can just, you know, bounce back into the microphone. I really am interested to see how my microphones compare um, to each other and how they perform. And this test will show you actually a comparison from all the microphones compared from this room uh, up there to this room. All right, for this test, I have the Lavalier and I have the Rode NT5. This is what the Rode NT5 sounds like in the fairly treated room of my studio and how it sounds when the microphone is slightly off frame and uh, well, basically pointed right on my chest. So basically it's pointed down and it's like the sound comes out of my mouth and if you imagine it just goes up. So right about here is the microphone and this microphone has the uh, windscreen on. I know it's inside but uh, I wanted to test out the, my theory at least that if you have that pop filter on your microphone there's not a lot of chance for reflections in the room to actually jump back into the microphone because they lose energy. That's the theory. So let's see how it sounds. And this is how it sounds with the Rode Lavalier Go. I would call it, I will actually, uh, you know, give you text in the description below. So this is how that sounds like and the lovely microphone is pointed uh, downwards to actually have, well, less reflection from the ceiling of the room and also to minimize some P and plopping and P, 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 you know, like these sounds that uh, have a lot of wind coming from your uh, mouth hitting the capsule of the microphone. So we will see how that sounds like. Now, 
if you excuse me, I will actually jump into the next room and we will test this exact setup right there. All right, now you are listening to the Rode NT, no, not the NTG2. This is the Rode NT5. And I always get these confused because, well, I'm so used to my Rode NTG2 that I always confuse it with this microphone just in, you know, getting used to saying Rode NTG2, which basically means that uh, it's used very, very extensive and very, very often. You know, this microphone is very good in capturing production sound, sound effects, uh, stuff like that. I don't think this microphone will perform that good in this room. Why? I don't know, it's just a feeling. All right, so now uh, let's see how you can hear me now. Um, you can hear me now with the lav microphone. And um, I forgot to say that um, usually I use something like this. This is basically a Fathead, uh, Fathead Phantom. And you can use this thing as kind of like a pre-amplifier on your... Um, well, on your microphones. And it basically goes between your microphone and your cable that would actually attach to the microphone and then go to the recorder. But I decided to actually not use these things because I wanted to see how that microphone sounds without any additional amplifying, um, except for the amplifiers that are already built into my, uh, my Zoom F6 recorder. All right, so now you can hear me uh, with the microphone that I actually used since I think 2008 or something like that. It's the microphone that is uh, the longest in my arsenal and it is the Rode NTG2. Um, I know <laughs> it's uh, Rode, it's not Ro Rode, it's Rode, Rode? I don't know. I'm sorry, my Australian viewers. Um, <laughs> I'm German, so, you know, I'm still learning. But this is the microphone that is the longest in my kit. And basically what I, I did was, since I'm recording myself and I don't know what the levels are until I sit right here in front of the microphone, I have my iPad right here. And what I noticed was the thing that I used um, a lot of gain to actually bring it to the level that uh, my other microphones were. So basically I'm recording this between minus 18 and minus 12 dB. Um, and afterwards, if uh, you can hear that clearer uh, in the post-production, it's basically no EQ, it's no compression. It's basically just uh, bringing, it, bringing it up to a certain level. And basically, uh, I think it will be minus 14 dB FS, meaning minus 14 dB full scale, relative to full scale. And uh, I think I will have to use a limiter to limit it to minus three. So basically, effectively giving it um, about minus 16 to minus 17 dB full scale because videos in YouTube are usually mastered at around minus 13 to about minus 16 dB full scale. And that's what I'm trying to do. So what I'm actually saying is just normalize it to zero dB where zero dB is basically minus 
13 or minus 14 db fs but you can actually see that in the description and uh, when i'm through the post processing process which basically will just you know turn up the signal b um, i will let you know and i will write that down in the description all right so let's see how the road ngg2 uh, behaves in the terrible room and i have my suspicion i think it will be terrible because it's basically built for outside so let's see how that looks like in the other room. All right, so this one should be very interesting. It's the Rode NTG2 and it is in the most terrible environment that you can actually throw a shotgun microphone into. So this should be very interesting. And at that point in time, I don't know how it sounds like, but I would imagine it sounds terrible. So let me know what you think but uh, i think that uh, in post-production we will know better and i think that um, it will sound terrible so one thing i noticed though one of the microphones that i have uh, which is for the ladies because well they say you know it's a pretty big microphone so this one is the one that I would actually bet my life on to. I think that this one is the best out of my microphones for this specific room, but uh, we will see. This is the AKG C1000S, um, but I'm not sure. Let's see how that um, T-Bone EM800 performs right here. So now you can hear me with a microphone that I dearly love and uh, it's basically very 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 budget friendly and this microphone is the uh, t-bone em 800 microphone and i will actually uh, put it in the description down below so you can actually hear what that sounds like with just that microphone in you know almost in the frame but uh, it's pointed down and it's not pointed towards me or towards my chest well a little bit towards my chest but uh, it's basically a little bit more i would say it's that much where the microphone is away from my mouth so maybe it's about i would say 20 centimeters so you can hear what that sounds like in the well fairly treated room now let's see how it sounds like in the untreated room right next door all right so this one should be interesting this one is the em800 uh, the t-bone em800 and um, when i actually took a look on the levels on uh, the gain setting i was too high because i used the um, akg uh, c1000s before so that's a good sign uh, meaning that it has kind of a narrower um, pickup pattern i would imagine i think that this microphone out of all the microphones i use nah, it's difficult but i think that the akg c1000s is the winner i'm not sure about that because this one seems to be pretty fine too so let's find out all right so now i have one of my i would say oldest and most budget friendly microphones on top and it's just out of frame and uh, its name is the akg c1000s basically this is a microphone for i would say interviews and stuff like that and um, i'm really really stoked to see what uh, this microphone brings to the table um, and again i had to actually bump up the um, gain some more and i'm recording between minus 18 db and minus 12 db um, so because usually i would actually use this uh, fat head from triton audio which i'm not using right now and you definitely can see the difference and um, to be honest i want to see how it compares to um, the other microphones especially in the other room because i think that 
in this room right here it's fairly treated and i think this one is well i think it's gonna be a surprise to hear it in the other room because i already had kind of like an impression when i did a small test in the other room but uh, let's see if this microphone really performs out the other most importantly the more expensive microphones because the most expensive microphone i own is this one this is the rode ntg2 and to be honest this is the only shotgun microphone i own because i saw it and i heard it in different tests and i still think this microphone is really great um, of course i would use it with the triton audio fathead uh, not with the phantom one but with the uh, normal one which is kind of strange but uh, you can actually see it in my other video that i did uh, about three years ago i guess so still a very good microphone though but uh, let's see how the AKG C1000S uh, compares to the other microphones in the other room. This is the AKG C1000S and um, it's basically right out of frame right around here. And um, well, basically this is the most terrible room that you can actually record in. There is nothing else in here. There's just my lights and there is no carpet or well there is kind of like a carpet on the floor but it doesn't do anything and basically I didn't do anything additional to soundproof this room. So this is what the AKG C1000S sounds like. So this test will basically be like so. I will record each and every microphone I own in 48 kilohertz and 24 bit. Basically, uh, that's how everyone records their sound. Uh, the only difference is I will use my F6 recorder and you might not have the F6, you might have the, I don't know, H4N or H5 or something like that. That's totally fine and this is by no means a scientific test I will do but it's just for me to see uh, which microphones to use in which environment um, because I will have this room right here which is fairly treated uh, on the walls there are some foam boards and um, I used to have uh, some big pieces of cloth uh, to soak up the audio that's reflecting I really am interested to see how my microphones compare um, to each other and how they perform so this is the AKG C1000S and um, it's basically right out of frame right around here and um, well basically this is the most terrible room that you can actually record in there is nothing else in here there's just my lights and there is no carpet or well there is kind of like a carpet on the floor but it doesn't do anything and basically i didn't do anything additional to soundproof this room so this is what the akg c1000s sounds like Uh, T-Bone EM800 microphone and I will actually uh, put it in the description down below so you can actually hear what that sounds like with just that microphone in you know almost in the frame but uh, it's pointed down and it's not pointed towards me or towards my chest well a little bit towards my chest but uh, it's basically a little bit more I would say it's that much where the microphone is away from my mouth so maybe it's about I would say 20 centimeters so you can hear what that sounds like in the 
well, fairly treated room. Now let's see how it sounds like in the untreated room right next door. All right, so this one should be interesting. This one is the EM800, uh, the T-Bone EM800. And um, when I actually took a look on the levels on uh, the gain setting, I was too high because I used the um, AKG uh, C1000S before. So that's a good sign. Uh, meaning that it has kind of a narrower um, pickup pattern, I would imagine, but uh, we will see. Um, basically, this is a little bit more than this, maybe this much from my mouth. It's right, should be out of frame, but uh, if it's not out of frame, and that's the big uh, point of shooting with a higher resolution, is, is I can always crop in some more. So if for some reason there is a microphone just in the frame and it's not... All right, so now you can hear me uh, with the microphone that I actually used since I think 2008 or something like that. It's the microphone that is uh, the longest in my arsenal and it is the Rode NTG2. Um, I know it's a uh, road. It's not road. It's road. Road. I don't know. I'm sorry, my Australian viewers. Um, <laughs> I'm German, so you know I'm still learning. But this is the microphone that is the longest in my kit. And basically, what I I did was. Since I'm recording myself and I don't know what the levels are until I sit right here in front of the microphone, I have my iPad right here. And what I noticed was the thing that... Right, so this one should be very interesting. It's the Rode NTG2 and it is in the most terrible environment that you can actually throw a shotgun microphone into. So this should be very interesting. And at that point in time, I don't know how it sounds like, but I would imagine it sounds terrible. So let me know what you think. But uh, I think that uh, in post-production, we will know better. And I've, one of the microphones that I have, uh, which is for the ladies, because, well, they say, you know, it's a pretty big microphone. So this one is the one that I would actually bet my life on too. I think that this one is the best out of my microphones for this specific room, but uh, we will see. This is the AKG C1000S. Um, but this is what the Rode NT5 sounds like in the fairly treated room of my studio. And how it sounds when the microphone is slightly off frame and uh, well basically pointed right on my chest so basically it's pointed down and it's like the sound comes out of my mouth and if you imagine it just goes up so right about here is the microphone and this microphone has the uh, windscreen on i know it's inside but uh, i wanted to test out the, my theory at least that if you have that pop filter on your microphone there's not a lot of chance for reflections in the room to actually jump back into the microphone because they lose energy that's the theory so let's see how it sounds and this is how it sounds with the road lavalier all right now you are listening to the road nt no not the NTG2, this is the Rode NT5. And I always get these confused because, well, I'm so used to my Rode NTG2 uh, that I always confuse it with this microphone just in, you know, getting used to saying Rode NTG2, which basically means that uh, it's used very, very extensive and very, very often. But you can actually hear me uh, with the Rode NTG5 right now. And to be honest, I think that microphone is a very good one. It's very good for instruments or for, uh, you know, capturing different uh, sound effects. 
uh, for production sound or something like that. But I don't think that it will come be very good in this room. Especially. All right, so now I have one of my, I would say, oldest and most budget-friendly microphones on top. And it's just out of frame. And uh, its name is the AKG C1000S. Basically, this is a microphone for, I would say, interviews and stuff like that. And um, I'm really, really stoked to see what uh, this microphone brings to the table. Um, and again, I had to actually bump up the um, gain some more. And I'm recording between minus 18 dB and minus 12 dB. Um, so because usually I would actually use this uh, Fethead from Triton Audio, which I'm not using right now, and you definitely can see the difference. And um, to be honest, I this is the AKG C1000S, and um, it's basically right out of frame right around here. And um, well, basically this is the most terrible room that you can actually record in. There is nothing else in here. There's just my lights and there is no carpet or well, there is kind of like a carpet on the floor, but it doesn't do anything. And basically I didn't do anything additional to soundproof this room. I wanted to show you something and that's one thing I think is really, really cool. See the size difference, ladies? thing is, well, this is a shotgun microphone, the NTG2, and the EM800 is not a shotgun microphone. Um, but they both share the same pickup pattern. Uh, though this is not a shotgun microphone, um, it has the same pickup pattern than this one. And that's actually very good for indoor use. At least that's what the theory is. And uh, at that point, you already know what this sounds like in this room. But uh, to be honest, uh, the size difference is always good for, let's say you're limited from space uh, at your location. You can actually use these microphones and get very close to your actor. And these microphones are basically always in the way because the sound guy has to uh, point it down and it's kind of like always in the frame and this one I feel like is easier to control and you can basically stick a, a tape um, colored tape around the uh, pop filter and then it's easier to see when you get in frame of the camera so you can actually uh, use that as a method of not getting in the way but I think these form factors of the microphones are just great because it's not heavy. It's just perfect for small rooms where the ceiling height is, well, limited and you can use that indoors as well. So I hope you liked that video. And uh, if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, of course. Um, how do you use microphones and what do you use them for? Uh, write it in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.